could ding for it? Uh, if I was your examiner, I would totally ding you for it. <laughs> All right, so we're going to start with the fluids. Uh, we're going to do the cop, which is coolant, oil, power steering. You're just going to have to point to it. You don't actually have to do anything else. So you're going to point to the coolant. You're going to say, I'm going to check and make sure it's between add and full. I would check the oil on the dipstick to make sure it's between add and full. And I'm going to check the power steering fluid is a black cap in the back there. I'm going to check to make sure that the fluid is between add and full. We're going to go um, talk about belts. They are located back here. Uh, so you're not going to be able to see them, but just know they're right here. The belts are going to talk about condition. They need to be uh, not worn or frayed. And you're going to need to talk about how you're going to check the tension of the belt. So you're going to check it by pushing down in the center of the belt. It cannot move more than half inch to three quarters of an inch. That's the deflection. Air compressor compressor is attached to the silver braided hose in the back there. We're using that hose as our like guide for where it's at because you can't see it. So the air compressor, we're talking about security. There's no loose or missing nuts or bolts, and we're going to make sure that it's not leaking. This bus does not have an alternator. Uh, we're going to check and make sure that there's no leaks in the engine compartment and we're going to check our hoses for condition. We're going to make sure that the hoses are not, um, they're not worn, there's no holes. Uh, generally when we're talking about any kind of a rubber part, we're going to talk about the ABCs, no abrasions, no bulges, no cuts. That's how you know it's in good condition. And then that's it for the engine compartment. Before you move on to, from an area, you're going to go back up and make sure that you've talked about everything in that section and then move on. Just take a second, go back over real quick and be sure that you said it correctly and that you covered everything. And then you're gonna shut the lid. Again, don't hit her. And follow it down and no leaks on the ground. That way you're showing her that you're looking for leaks on the ground as well. Okay, if you're pointing up here to the steering box, that's not where it's at. They could mark you down for that. So down here, steering box, I'm going to make sure it's secure. There's no loose or missing nuts or bolts. I'm going to make sure it's in good condition. It's not cracked or broken. We're going to talk about the hoses. Hoses, generally we only talk about condition of hoses, um, and it's a rubber part, so we're going to talk about ABCs. There's no abrasions, there's no bulges, there's no cuts, and they're not leaky. All right? Steering linkage is attached to the steering box back here to the axle, so you just would go like that. I'm gonna make sure it's secure. There's no loose or missing nuts or bolts, and it's in good condition. It's not bent or cracked. Front suspension, we're gonna check our airbags. We've got two airbags on the other side of the tire here, so you're just gonna pull it right there and say, I'm gonna check the airbags. Um, that's just condition, so I'm gonna make sure there's no audible leaks, there's no bulges, there's no cuts. Air mounts, I'm gonna make sure that they are secure, no loose and missing nuts or bolts, and they're in good condition, they're not cracked or broken. We do not have U-bolts. Shock absorber is behind the tire here. We're gonna make sure it's secure, there's no loose or missing nuts or bolts, and it's not leaking, all right? The, uh, we do not have a driver's door, so we're gonna check the mirror, make sure it's secure, there's no loose or missing nuts or bolts, uh, and then we'll check the operation once we get inside. We're going to walk around to this side. Alright, so fuel tank and cap. We're going to make sure that the cap is secure. It's not leaking. We're going to make sure that the fuel tank is secure. There's no loose or missing nuts or bolts and it's not leaking. Tanks are put on by straps, so a way to know if it's uh, loose is if there's a shiny area around the straps. That means the tank is shifted and where the straps are is going to be clean of dirt. So that would be an indication that the tank is shifted, okay? So checking for security, checking for leaks, and looking for leaks underneath, okay? And then we're going to talk about the drive shaft. You can't see it from here. Uh, so just describe where it's at. The drive shaft is located 
in the center of the bus. It's attached to the transmission up to the axle. You're going to make sure it's secure. There's no loose or missing nuts or bolts, and it's in good condition. It's not bent or cracked, and it's properly lubricated. The exhaust system, we're going to make sure that it is secure. There's no loose or missing nuts or bolts, and we're going to make sure it's in good condition. Condition. There's no signs of leaks, which would be soot trails. Okay. The frame, we're going to make sure it's in good condition. There's no broken welds. There's no loose and missing nuts or bolts. It's longitudinally straight. Okay. And then baggage compartment, we don't have. So we're just going to skip that. And we're going to come back here. We're going to talk about our rims. We're going to make sure that they're in good condition. There's no additional welds. The B flange is intact. It's not dented. The tires, we're going to talk about the inflation of the tire. It needs to be within the acceptable range. I would check that with a tire gauge. We're going to check the tread depth. Tread depth is, has to be at least 2 30 seconds in the rear and at least 4 30 seconds in the front. And the sidewall, we're going to make sure, we're going to check those ABCs. So there's no abrasions, there's no bulges, there's no cuts. <laughs> Definitely some abrasions. We know what happened there. <laughs> <laughs> um, lug nuts, we're going to make sure, first of all, that they're all present and um, there's no loose or missing uh, nuts or bolts, and there's no signs of looseness, which would be shiny threads or rust trails. Hub axle seal, we're going to make sure it's not leaking, and we would check the level in the front sight class there. It's that red cap. Do not touch the red cap. Most likely it will break on you. Uh, spacers or bud spacing, we don't have yeah, these the on our wheels. They are actually built into our wheels. However, I would make sure that the duals are not touching and that there's no debris lodged in between them. Okay? And then the rear suspension, I would check the same as the front. You have to be sure that you set everything correctly on the front because if you miss points on the front, she's going to automatically give you those missed points if you say it like that. But then on the flip side, if you say it correctly, then you're going to get those points as well on this one, All right? We check them the same. Uh, the torque arm radius rod, which you can just see right there, we're going to make sure it's secure. There's no loose or missing nuts or bolts, and it's in good condition. It's not bent or cracked. Where, where is it? It's, yeah. it's hard to see here from the shadows, but it's that arm right there just in front of the okay. frame. We'll put this bus up on a lift on Fleet Services Day and show you all of these specifically. All right. Slack adjusters and push rods. Uh, there's no less than 90 degree angle and no more than one inch of play with the brakes released. Slack adjusters, I would check with the brakes on. The push rod um, cannot have more than one inch of play and it needs to be straight, not bent or cracked. Uh, chambers, uh, located in the same spot, which is right behind the tires here. We're gonna make sure the chambers are secure. There's no loose or missing nuts or bolts and they're in good condition. They're not dented. Hoses and lines, we're going to make sure that they are secure. No loose or missing nuts or bolts, and they are in good condition. They're not worn or frayed or cracked. Drums and lining, we're going to make sure that they're in good condition. They're not cracked. The linings need to be free of oil and grease, and the lining has to have at least a quarter inch of thickness left. Mud flaps, we're going to check the condition. We're going to make sure that they're not ripped or torn and they are no more than 10 inches from the ground. And then we're going to walk up to the passenger area. <clears throat> All right, so I'm going to make sure, I'm going to demonstrate this. I'm going to make sure that the door opens and closes correctly. It's free of debris, or it's clear. Um, the lift, I'm going to make sure it's secure. There's no loose or missing nuts or bolts, and it's properly stored. I'm going to make sure it's in good condition. There's no wires or chains hanging down. So you just give them a little look. And the handrail, I checked that already, but I'm just going to mention it. I'm going to check the handrail, make sure it's secure. There's no loose or missing nuts or bolts, and it's not cracked or broken. The step light, I'm going to make sure that it's secure. No loose or missing nuts or bolts. They're in good condition. I'm going to check once I turn the bus on that they properly illuminate. Right? And we actually have to point out to her when you're examining at that point that you're looking oh there's the step light it came on and we'll do that when we get to that point all right and then we're going to come on the bus
secure there's no loose or missing nuts or bolts you're gonna to want to actually go down and give them a little shake um, don't rip them off of the frames we've had people do that before I don't know how um, but don't break anything on the bus while you're doing this and I would just go down and say this is how I check it and this would be like I would check them all the same um, you're also going to point out the emergency exits okay um, we have both doors two roof hatches any window with a red handle and you actually are gonna to have to go down and point out each window individually and say, this is an emergency exit. So you're gonna look for all the ones with the red handle and you're gonna walk down the bus and say, that's an emergency exit, that's an emergency exit, that one, that one, that one. And you're also gonna make sure that they are all properly uh, <coughs> labeled. So that's that red up there. They're labeled as emergency exit and they're labeled how to use them. She does want a demonstration, so I'm gonna show that to you. I'm gonna squeeze in here. So you're going to Pull the handle down, push the window out, make sure the handle's up, and then you just, to close it, hold it out at arm's length, and let it slam shut. Check it to make sure it's actually shut. You don't want to be driving down with that window popping open. Okay? And then we're going to go um, and check the front outside lights. So you're going to get in the driver's seat, and you're going to ask her to step outside and give you a thumbs up as you go through your list. So she's going to give you a thumbs up as you go through. That's not saying that you're doing it correctly. She's just acknowledging basically that she heard what you're doing. Okay. Uh, you have to know which ones to check. So you're going to get in the seat. You're going to turn this on to night run. So it's going to be in the off position. You're going to turn it two clicks to the right. Okay. That's night. That makes um, your outside lights come on. Turn the air on to your door and ask her if she'd like to go outside. She's going to say, I would love to. She's going to step off the bus. As soon as she steps off the bus, close that door. Okay? Put your foot on the service brake and close the door. And that's going to benefit your next test that you do after this one. So then you're just going to run through your outside lighting indicators, which are your turn signals, four way flashes, right? So you can do left signal, right? You can say yes. Right signal, yep. Four ways, yep. And then high beam, turn your high beams on, turn them off, okay? And then she's gonna come up to your window, huh? There you go. And then she's gonna come up over here and you're gonna say, hey, would you love to go to the back of the bus and check my back lights? And she's gonna say, oh my gosh, I'd just love to do that for you. <laughs> and so she's gonna walk in the back. Basically, you're gonna do the same thing, except for you're gonna add tail lights and brake lights. Now, the reason you have to shut your door is because when you have that door interlock on, it actually turns the brake lights on out in the back of the bus. So when you go to do brake lights, they're going to be on. So she's not going to know, really, is that brake lights or is that tail lights? So you want to make sure you clear that by closing your door, pushing on the service brake. Okay, people forget that one. And so you do the same thing. Left blinker, right blinker, four ways. I do uh, brake lights first. Brake lights, push on the brake lights, do your thumbs up, let off. Tail lights, now she can see the one versus the other. The brake lights came on and then they went off. She can actually see that. And then she's going to come up over here to this side. I'm going to open the door here. And you're going to get out and you're going to meet her at the door. And you're going to talk about, now that the bus is on, your step light illuminated properly. And then you're going to talk about your clearance lights and reflectors. You're going to make sure that they all work properly, they're undamaged, they're secure, no loose and missing nuts and bolts, and not cracked. And you're actually going to have to point out to her uh, what, where they are. So step off. Good game. Properly. I'm also going to check my reflectors. So 
she wants us to actually point to so that we know what's a reflector and what's a clearance light, okay? Uh, and that's it. You don't have to walk around the whole bus. You just have to point out who wants to see that, okay? And then after that, we're going to step back on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so you're going to clear off all of that. So I'm going to shut the door. There 
goes one brake. I'm going to take my parking brake off. Now my foot is on the service brake. I'm going to take my foot off. If the bus rolls, I'm going to put it right back on. Okay. Here we go. So brakes are off. Um, now you're going to start your leak test. You're going to shut it off. One click to the right. Let the engine die. Turn it back to night run. Okay. And then you're going to apply 50 pounds of pressure to the service brake. You're going to hold that for one minute. So apply your pressure, check the time, and you're going to sit here for one minute. Your uh, air cannot drop more than three PSI in that minute. And you're just going to sit here in silence. Don't carry on a conversation with her at this point. Uh, just sit there for a minute. All right, so I'm going to pretend that it was a minute. We didn't lose any air, so we're good to go. That passes. Next thing we're going to do is our low air warning alarm. I'm going to set the parking brake. And then I'm going to pop the air down until the uh, warning alarm comes on solidly. It's going to start chirping first. We want to wait to keep pumping until it comes on solid. It's got to come on at or above 60 PSI. Okay? And then you just, you just go to it. There you go. Came on and it was above 60 PSI. Some of these buses do not have an audible alarm with the bus turned off, so you'll have to watch for that light up there. All right, so low air brakes. Okay. All right, so that one passed. I'm going to go ahead and start my bus. The next two uh, tests that we do, the bus is going to be running because you actually are going to be moving the bus. So I'm just going to start it. There's your audible alarm, right? So we're going to wait until the air gets up to the acceptable range, which is between 90 and 120. Just wait till the alarm goes off. All right. So the next one we're going to do is our parking brake test. We're going to make sure it's within the acceptable range for air. And we're going to take our parking brake off. We're going to put it in gear. Make sure it's actually in gear. Um, hold it for a few seconds to make sure that that is not flashing. Okay. Once this is above 90, I'm going to actually wait until that gets above 100 just so I know I have enough air. So I would suggest uh, verbalizing what you're doing while you're waiting for that air to come up. And then usually by the time you're done verbalizing that, your air is built up before you can actually go on the test. All right? So we're going to, with it in gear, parking brakes off, you're going to let it idle forward. You shouldn't really have to hit the, the accelerator, just let it idle. I'm going to do this, so everybody hang on, okay? And then you're going to, without using the service brake, you're going to set the parking brake. Bus stop, so the parking brake works. The next one we're going to do, take the parking brake off, we're going to do the service brake test. We're going to pull forward until we get to five miles per hour, and then we're going to firmly apply the service brake. It must stop your bus without pulling left or right, okay? And I want your hands on the wheel for that in case it doesn't, in case it pulls, you're actually there to stop it from going anywhere. And then once you do that correctly, you're going to say, okay, I've done that correctly, it passes, and I'm done with my air brake test. Okay? If, if you realize that you did any part of any of those tests incorrectly, let her know and just restart the, one of those tests. Hey, I think I did my leak test wrong. I'm going to restart that. Uh, usually what happens is you'll get to that next test where you're setting the parking brake for the low air warning, and your parking brake will be on. And you'll be like, that's your cue that you did it wrong. So you'll be like, oh, shoot, my parking brake was on. I'm going to restart that. And then just restart it again, take it off, and restart the test. Okay? Make sense? All right. Good. I'm going to open that That's it. That's it. Yeah. So we don't do the 